Have you ever wondered how our childhood experiences shape our personality? The human experience is multifaceted, and the impact of trauma varies greatly depending on individual circumstances, support systems, and coping mechanisms. However, exploring the potential connections between childhood experiences and personality development can be insightful, provided we approach it with nuance and respect for individual journeys. In our exploration, we'll delve into five distinct personality types that could potentially emerge from different types of childhood trauma. These include the doer, an achievement-oriented individual, the isolate, who might seem withdrawn, the caregiver, nurturing and selfless, the rebel, challenging and risk-taking, and the seeker, seemingly unstable and always searching. Each personality type carries its unique strengths and challenges, shaped by the individual's past experiences. So, without further ado, let's dive into the depths of these personality types and their potential origins in childhood. Let's start with the doer, the achievement-oriented individual. This personality type might emerge from a background of emotional neglect or abuse, where as a child, the individual learns to rely on themselves for validation and self-worth. In the face of adversity, the doer leans into their inner strength, striving to excel in academics, sports, or other pursuits. It's as if they're driven by an engine of resilience, a need for external recognition, and a yearning for a sense of control that their emotional environment may have lacked. But let's peel back the layers. What's really going on beneath this exterior of achievement and success? Often, it's a profound sense of self-reliance. The doer has learned, sometimes painfully, that they can't rely on others for emotional support or validation. They've learned to find these things within themselves, to be their own cheerleader, their own support system. However, this constant striving can also be a mask, a shield against the world. It can hide underlying emotional pain, a difficulty in connecting with others on a deeper level. It's a protective mechanism, a way of cloaking vulnerability in the armor of accomplishment. The doer's journey is a testament to the human spirit's resilience, the ability to rise above challenging circumstances. But it's also a reminder that achievement is not always a sign of emotional health or happiness. This constant striving of the doer often masks deeper emotional pain. Next, we have the isolate, the lone wolf of the personality types. The isolate is characterized by withdrawal and solitude, often developing as a result of social isolation or emotional abandonment in childhood. Picture a child left on their own without emotional support or social interaction. This can be a daunting and confusing experience, often leading the child to retreat inward, focusing more on their internal world rather than external connections. This retreat isn't necessarily a choice, but more of a survival mechanism. The child may learn to rely on their own company, preferring the predictability and safety of solitude over the uncertainty of social interaction. This self-imposed isolation can be a protective shield, a way to avoid further hurt or rejection. Yet, this shield can also be a cage. The isolate may struggle with forming close relationships later in life. Trust and intimacy become towering walls to scale, rather than bridges to cross. There's a fear of vulnerability, a fear of letting others in and potentially facing betrayal or abandonment once again. This fear can lead to loneliness, a painful paradox where the isolate yearns for connection yet pushes it away for fear of getting hurt. However, it's important to remember that this is not a destiny set in stone. With the right support and understanding, the isolate can learn to navigate social interactions and relationships more effectively, and perhaps even find comfort in them. The isolate struggles with fear of vulnerability and potential betrayal. But within that struggle, there's also the potential for growth and resilience. Moving on, we encounter the caregiver, the nurturing and selfless individual. This personality type may emerge from the ashes of a childhood marred by the specter of parental suffering or the early onset of caretaking responsibilities. These experiences can shape a child into an empathetic adult who is always ready to provide a helping hand, often neglecting their own needs in the process. Imagine a child thrust into a role of responsibility, perhaps due to a sick parent or younger siblings who needed care. This child learns to prioritize the needs of others above their own, 
viewing their worth through the lens of their usefulness to those around them. As they mature, they carry this learned behavior into adulthood, often going above and beyond to support those around them. However, beneath this altruistic exterior, the caregiver may wrestle with their own emotional well-being. Their constant focus on others can lead to a neglect of their own needs, and they may struggle with setting boundaries and asserting their own needs within relationships. This can lead to a pattern of codependency, as they may fear that setting boundaries or prioritizing their own needs could lead to abandonment. The strength of the caregiver lies in their empathy and ability to nurture others. However, it is crucial for them to learn the importance of self-care and setting boundaries to ensure their own emotional well-being is not compromised. The caregiver often struggles with setting boundaries and fears abandonment. Now, we'll examine the rebel, the challenger, and the risk taker. This personality archetype, the rebel, is a fascinating study in resilience and self-expression. In environments where there is rigid control or authoritarian abuse, a child may develop a rebellious disposition. This isn't just teenage angst we're talking about, it's a profound reaction to systemic oppression, a way of saying no when yes is the only accepted answer. Rebels often get a bad rap, labeled as troublemakers or misfits. But consider this, rebellion is a form of resistance, and resistance can be a powerful tool for change. The rebel's challenging nature can serve as a counterbalance to authoritarianism, pushing back against the status quo. Rebels can also be risk takers, they might engage in behaviors that others deem dangerous or unwise. This isn't necessarily due to a lack of understanding of consequences. Instead, it might be an attempt to regain control, a way to experience a thrill that's absent in a controlled environment. However, this personality type might also struggle with boundaries. When you've spent your life pushing against walls, it can be hard to recognize when they're there for a reason. This can lead to difficulties in relationships and personal growth, as the rebel may resist structure, even when it's beneficial. But remember, at the heart of the rebel's defiance is a quest for freedom. Their actions are often a response to an environment that stifled their voice, their choices, their very sense of self. The rebel seeks to reclaim their sense of agency and express suppressed anger. Lastly, we have the seeker, the unstable and constantly searching individual. The seeker personality type might have its roots in an early life filled with chaos or unpredictability. As a child, the seeker may have been thrust into environments where the ground seemed to shift under their feet, where unpredictability was the only predictable thing. This might have led to a constant search for safety and stability, a craving that follows them into adulthood. The seeker is often characterized by unstable relationships and impulsive behavior. The unpredictability they experienced as a child can make it difficult for them to set and achieve goals, as their focus might constantly shift in search of the elusive stability they crave. Moreover, the seeker might also be prone to seeking external validation and reassurance. They may struggle to find a sense of inner peace, always looking outside themselves to find a sense of belonging and security, the seeker constantly craves external validation and struggles to find inner peace. In conclusion, our childhood experiences can have profound effects on our personality development. The doer personality, driven by a need for validation and control, often emerges from an environment lacking emotional support. The isolate, on the other hand, develops from experiences of social isolation or emotional abandonment, leading to difficulties in forming close relationships. The caregiver personality type, nurturing and selfless, can stem from early experiences of needing to prioritize others' needs over their own. The rebel, challenging and risk-taking, arises in response to rigid control or authoritarian abuse, often as a way to reclaim a sense of agency. Lastly, the seeker, characterized by instability and a constant search for safety, may develop from an unpredictable childhood environment. Understanding these connections can help us better understand ourselves and others. But it's vital to remember that everyone's journey is unique. Each individual's resilience, support systems, and coping mechanisms shape their ability to navigate life's challenges and triumphs.